Gold is doing its job during an equity sell-off like we saw three weeks ago by outperforming everything else. This is the manipulated spot price, for goodness sakes. And it's outperforming the S&P 500, Treasuries, NASDAQ 100. What do you want, right? Give me something that I can hold that runs no counterparty risk in a sea where everything is counterparty risk. Where we are in a recession, even though they don't want you to realize that, some of you are experiencing it and you know, right? So what do you want to do? There's only one way to fight a recession, inflation. Zhang begins by addressing the perceived stability of overvalued markets, such as the stock market, which many investors mistakenly believe will safeguard their wealth. She explains that while these markets may appear to be safe in the short term, they are inherently unstable in the long term due to their overvaluation. The real issue, she points out, is that all you can do with the returns from these markets is convert them into fiat currency, which is continually losing value by design. According to Zhang, the purchasing power of the US dollar has already plummeted to just three cents of its original value, and this decline is expected to continue as long as the public maintains confidence in the system. Zhang stresses that it's not the truth that matters in these situations, but rather what is perceived to be true. This perception allows those in power to continue robbing the public of its wealth. She urges her viewers not to fall for the illusion, but to follow the actions of the world's central banks, which are hoarding gold in unprecedented quantities. The gold rush is not just a Western phenomenon. It is happening globally, with countries like Russia, China, and South Korea leading the charge. Zhang warns that the window of opportunity to get in at the beginning of this modern-day gold rush is closing fast. Zhang argues that gold and silver are the only true forms of money that can protect against the devaluation of fiat currencies and the systemic risks in the global economy. She points out that during recent equity sell-offs, gold outperformed every other asset class, including the S&P 500, Treasuries, and the NASDAQ 100, despite the manipulation of the spot price. This outperformance demonstrates gold's unique ability to preserve wealth in times of financial instability. In Zhang's view, gold and silver offer unparalleled protection because they do not carry any counterparty risk. Unlike fiat currencies and other financial assets that depend on the solvency of institutions or governments, gold and silver maintain their value over time and are immune to the failures of the financial system. She advises her viewers to invest in these precious metals as a hedge against inflation and recession, both of which are more prevalent than official statistics suggest. Zhang reveals that despite official reports, the economy is already in a recession, with rising unemployment and increasing defaults on debts. The public may not recognize the severity of the situation because the government and financial institutions are manipulating data to maintain a facade of stability. She explains that inflation is still a significant problem, even if its pace has slowed. The essential goods and services that people need to buy daily have not decreased in price, which is why many are struggling to make ends meet. According to Zhang, the only way to protect oneself from these economic realities is through gold and silver. These metals have historically served as reliable stores of value, especially during times of economic turmoil. She hints at upcoming videos that will delve deeper into the transition from the current fiat money system to a new monetary system and how positioning oneself in gold and silver can offer a voice in this new financial landscape. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview. But first hit the like button, smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. What these low interest rates really mean are more debt, more defaults, more crisis, more inflation, and less and less and less for you, unless you are in a position to take advantage of what's happening. And that means that what you have to do is hold your purchasing power intact. Will those severely overvalued markets do that? Maybe on a short-term basis, but definitely not on a long-term basis. Because all you can do is convert them into this stuff. That's all you can do. And this stuff is losing value by design and has been. Officially, we have three cents left. And that continues to go down and down and down. And we only have three cents left because the public still has confidence. Remember, 
It's not what's true that matters. It is what is perceived to be true that matters. Yeah, it, it is what is perceived to be true that matters because that's what puts you in a position for them to rob you of your wealth. Don't believe them. Do what they're doing, right? They're buying gold hand over fist. This just came in this morning. Gold bulls delight in Jackson Hole as Powell juices the price rally. Gold's record-setting rally above 2,500 an ounce looks to have further to run. Uh, looks to have further to run as the Federal Reserve prepares to chop rates. Traditional drivers such as lower yield return and Western investors pile back in. Yes, they do. And we're seeing this not just with Western investors, but certainly with Eastern investors too, in Russia, in China, in South Korea, everywhere in the world, we are all at the beginnings of a modern day gold rush. You want to be in it at the beginning. Gold and silver are remain severely undervalued. But this is also what I wanted to show you because gold is doing its job during an equity sell-off like we saw three weeks ago by outperforming everything else. This is the manipulated spot price for goodness sakes. And it's outperforming the S&P 500, treasuries, NASDAQ 100. What do you want, right? Give me something that I can hold that runs no counterparty risk in a sea where everything is counterparty risk. Where we are in a recession, even though they don't want you to realize that, some of you are experiencing it and you know, right? So what do you wanna do? There's only one way to fight a recession, inflation. So, oh, they've slowed inflation down enough, even though the public doesn't realize it. And they say, why doesn't the public recognize that we've slowed down this inflation? Because the things that you or I have to buy on a daily basis have not come down. It's the speed at which they go up. You wanna protect that? You do gold. Yeah, do silver. That's how you protect it. And we've got some videos coming out. I'm not quite sure when, but it's important enough that I want um, Adam and Arthur to spend enough time on it to make it as good as possible so that you can see how they make the transition from one fiat money into the next iteration. If we come together and we position into gold and silver, it's not going to be easy for them to do. We can, perhaps if we get enough people participating, we can have a seat at the table. And what that means to me is that I want a voice in the new monetary system. And not just me, but for everybody. I want a much, much, much more fair system because this system that we're in has chosen the winners and the losers. And the only way that we can have a seat at the table is to say, nope, you do not have control over the, us. This is invisible and in your possession. Zhang passionately believes that if enough people invest in gold and silver, it will be difficult for the powers that be to impose a new monetary system without public consent. By holding tangible assets, individuals can assert their independence from the current system, which has consistently favored the wealthy and powerful while leaving the average person vulnerable. She envisions a future where more people have a say in the new monetary order resulting in a much fairer system. One common argument against gold and silver is that they do not pay interest, unlike bonds or other debt instruments. Zhang counters this by explaining that gold and silver do not need to pay interest because they inherently protect against counterparty risk and inflation. In contrast, interest-bearing assets like treasuries may seem attractive, but they are tied to the very system that is on the brink of collapse. As the Federal Reserve continues to cut interest rates, the value of these debt instruments may rise temporarily, but they do nothing to protect against the long-term devaluation of the currency. Zhang also warns that as interest rates drop, the cost of holding gold and silver decreases, making them even more attractive as investments. However, she cautions against storing these metals in bank-safe deposit boxes, as they are still vulnerable to the systemic risks of the banking sector.
Instead, she recommends private vaults or secure home storage as safer alternatives. In theory, okay, here's the theory. Why would you want gold and silver that do not pay you interest rates when you can get treasuries or other debt instruments that actually do pay interest? So there's the theory that treasuries are much better because it pays. Well, gold and silver don't have to pay interest because they don't run any counterparty risk and they maintain your purchasing power over time. Whereas um, with Jerome Powell cutting the interest rates to what will that do? Well, let, let's take a look at this because there are a number of different reasons for them cutting the rates. This is what I'm looking for. Oops. Yeah, I'm looking for this. Okay, here are interest rates. This is the market value of the debt, right? And that's all debt. So it's mortgages as well as bonds, et cetera. And we already know that we have a wall of debt that is hitting. And we also know that defaults are rising at a very, very rapid rate. And we also know that unemployment is much higher than they've been telling us over the last months, right? So that means that they get to call an official recession, but we're already there. All right, so interest rates. When they drop the interest rates, the market value of the debt goes up. That can help a lot of the banks that are so underwater. If there is a run on the banks, that means that the banks could fail. And we're even talking about large ones like JP Morgan Chase, et cetera. Now they're gonna go stop right? So you're going to, your money's going to be stuck in there. And we know they have the power to do that. But the other thing is if interest rates are going down and this is as it refers to the gold and the silver, the cost to hold it, well, it remains the same. If you have it in say a safe deposit box in a bank, which is not my personal preference, but may be the only option. My personal preference is a private vault, right? Because they'll be holding a lot more things, but it minimizes the cost to hold. And of course you can also hold it in your home, which then eliminates that cost. You would just have to get it set up so that it is extremely invisible and extremely safe. So actually by dropping the rates, the lower the rates are, the higher we are more likely to see the spot market goes. Where you see my hesitancy is that Wall Street is in cahoots. Zhang acknowledges that Wall Street and the central banks are actively working to suppress the true value of gold and silver to keep the public from recognizing their importance. This perception management is designed to keep people invested in the fiat system, which benefits the elite at the expense of everyone else. She warns that waiting for Wall Street to reveal the true value of gold and silver is a fool's game. Instead, she advises taking action now, while confidence in fiat currencies is still relatively high to secure a position in these undervalued assets. Zhang predicts that the real value of gold and silver will only be recognized when there is a total loss of confidence in the fiat system. At that point, central banks and governments will be forced to revalue these metals to restore trust in the economy. This overnight revaluation could lead to significant gains for those who have invested in gold and silver, making now the optimal time to accumulate these assets. She cites a survey by the World Gold Council which found that 80% of both individual and institutional investors are recommending gold as a critical part of their portfolios. Zhang attributes this to a growing awareness among savvy investors that gold's value is poised to rise, not just in terms of spot prices, but as a fundamental safeguard against economic instability. With the central banks to keep the true value of gold and silver suppressed, to keep you away from it. It's perception management. And I will never be waiting for Wall Street to tell me the true value of gold or silver. I will be waiting until all confidence is lost And then in order to regain that confidence, which is why I'm looking so hard at Zimbabwe, I have an update for you on that, um, by the way, because they look like they're doing better, but because you can't convert the gold. 
You can't take the currency, the new Zimbabwe gold and convert it into the physical metal. So it, 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 there are a lot of interesting things and I don't want to go off on a tangent, but no, the lower the, he pushes the interest rates to save the corporations um, and to save the banking sector, the more than likely higher gold, spot gold and spot silver will go. But where you're going to maximize your benefit is when they do those overnight revaluations. And there's a whole strategy around that because we cannot get out of the way, but we can take advantage of it. Absolutely. Lots of, of institutional investors were recently, I think the World Gold Council did a survey and 80%, if I remember these numbers accurately, and maybe I just did a video um, on that not that long ago, Adam, maybe we can pull that link and put it in the bottom. And I'm pretty sure that 80% of, of regular investors and institutional investors have been recommending gold in some way. Why? Well, maybe because they know it's going higher in terms of spot, but also you should always do what the smartest guys in the room on any given topic are doing for themselves. Who knows more about what they're doing to this stuff than the central banks? Why do you think they're buying more gold than they ever have in history? Are they buying gold ETFs? Nope. They're buying the physical gold. And once they buy the gold, it's not coming back on the market. So, I mean, truthfully, yeah. Uh, with Bank of America, that, that is not a big surprise because most entities out there now are recommending gold and silver. Mm -hmm.